Welcome to Crimson Guitars, I'm Ben Crow, and I am currently taking a kit guitar and making it into something a little bit different. Um, we are not in my workshop at Crimson, we are in my home workshop. I'm currently working, working from home. I'm currently having a blast. Burn it. Ah, yay! Up to this point, I have cut the guitar in half. I have done a lot of internal carving and uh, all sorts of insanity here. And I even played around with a little bit of uh, forming of aluminium. So, well, let us crack on. I need to recess this piece. I need to fix this piece. The, the fact that I shaped it a little bit to, sh to follow the, the contours of the guitar means that it's, the metal is spread out a bit and it's not quite fitting anymore. So that curve is fine, but that line is not. So I'm going to trim a little bit and then file. Yay, shards of metal on my soft mat that I use to protect my guitars from shards of metal. I am feeling slightly foolish. Here's my brush. File. I can't put this in the vise because I've now got a curve and a shape to it. So I'm having to be relatively gentle. I, I, I did say relatively. Um, <laughs> This is one of my favorite files. It came through uh, vintagetoolshop.com and uh, I don't think I'm ever going to find another one like it. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, okay, decisions. I am going to have that as a bevel, as a chamfer, all the way around, recess the whole thing below the level of the top uh, it's going to be an interesting carve, but I want to hold it in with uh, large-headed uh, screws or, or bolts or something like that. And essentially, I want to have a, a notch cut out of those chamfers, and then the bolt will hold down over the top of that, and we'll have them placed around. Now, what I need to do is actually drill those recesses before I do the carve, so they're nice and... Um, well, nice. Okay. That'll do. Let's just run a test hole. Back of a bag of a jig. Yep, that looks good to me. Now I don't like using tape on drill bits because the swarf, the sawdust, uh, pushes tends to push tape out of the way. So I avoid that. Am I doing this perpendicular or square to the carved area? That's a good question. Oh crikey, it is thin, poop. Okay, not a problem. Uh, well, let's just get that out of there then. Poopy, 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 poop. Poop. Well, that's fine. So essentially uh, in that area, I'm gonna have to put a, a, a threaded metal washer or something to, to screw into. It's thinner than I thought it was, which is a bit silly because from the edge, you can see exactly how thin it actually is. How many of you saw that coming? Okay, uh, let us not dwell on my failures. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll carry on. What this means actually then is I'm gonna have to, well, not have to, 
I can, I can cut that whole bit out as a, as a whole, essentially. Um, give myself some corners here and there where I've already drawn one. Um, and then essentially chop that out and then we'll have the plate rest down on those. The plate has a curve to it already. Don't be silly, Ben. And there. And then maybe our LEDs will actually shine just a little bit around the edges of that and look cool. And the only thing is it's much thicker here, so that will require thought. And that cavity doesn't go all the way back there that way either, which is why that didn't go through. Okay, well, let's just see where we go. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the depth that I've on the drill bit and see what happens. Okay. Do they? Do I need those in the corner? No, I don't. It looks better without anyway. So uh, here's here's where we are. Um, I'm I'm enjoying this bit. I really am. What I've got is holes that are at the depth that I require. I also need these circular bits to be at the exact same depth. So I'm going to I'm going to drill. Uh, so that the center of my drill bit is there. I'm going to drill holes to the same depth all the way around. That will remove a lot of material. Oh, focus, focus, focus. There we go. And give me the depth that I require. And then I'm going to drill out a lot of excess and then cut that away. And we're going to end up with a pretty cool cavity. I am still sitting here wondering whether I want those at all. I don't even know if I want anything there at all. I, I just, I just don't know. What do you think? What do you think? I think that's in slightly the wrong place. <laughs> Uh, I need to set uh, the depth that I take my chamfer to as well. And I've got a couple of spots here where I need to do that. So uh, getting them off the line, but close. Okay. So the next question then is, do I, because I want to have these done. It's going to be strong enough. I'm going to get rid of the waste, not forgetting that I need to be leaving material around these bits. I'm going to drill out some of the excess and then chop that away and then cut. Thank you. 
So around here, I'm gonna have to put a, I'm gonna have to glue a separate piece on, I think. I'm gonna do the bevels, fit it in, see what it looks like. I don't have to cut all the excess away, really. I don't have to, so why do it? The thing I like about doing projects like this, um, I've been asked in the comments, why do a cyberpunk guitar? It's dead and rubbish like that. But uh, <clears throat> for me, when I allow myself to do outlandish things, then I get ideas that can be incorporated into a more traditional guitar as much as anything else. I absolutely love doing, making the videos, filming stuff. I enjoy going crazy and experimenting. And that's what's happened here. You can see there I've gone through just a little bit, which was expected, but we have a very cool looking plate. And then imagine that with screws holding that down. Bump. Uh, as a, it's, I, th I think I might actually end up using that as a, as a way of putting back plates on guitars. Anyway, looking, well, it's looking like what it's looking like. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm gonna do a bit of an experiment. I've got some uh, some hammerite paint. I've got various spray paints and bits and pieces, but they tend not to be uh, as hard wearing or as thick as it were. Um, not out of a rattle can. So I wanna run a quick test. And I've got this piece of metal that we mess around with, with the ferric chloride, and I'm gonna chop up another piece and just see what it looks like painted on. So I want to see what it looks like being painted over the ferric chloride. I, I don't think... So the ferric chloride has been neutralized. I don't think this has been etched deep enough to actually show through the paint because it's fairly thick paint, but it could. And there might be some sort of a reaction that could look cool. So basically I'm just, I'm just playing at this point. Um, this is not, yeah, this is pure experimentation. I'm probably gonna end up using a spray can, I think. While I'm about it, 
Let's see how this stuff acts as a, as a resist. It's not too bad, actually. All right, back in four hours to see what we've got. I'm going to finalize what's happening with these sound holes. I think I've finally just figured out what I'm going to plan, what I'm, what I'm doing there. The thought is that this plate is covering up uh, the, the nuclear power that uh, uh, gives this guitar life. And, uh, well, it needs to have a, a warning symbol on it. So that's what we're after. Too big. There will... No one there. So what I'm going to do is essentially the first part of, of inlay. Uh, I'm going to drill a tiny hole and then with a, a jeweler's saw, a fine blade, chop it all out. Uh, all on a crimson. Aha! This is a, a customised version of the crimson jeweler's jig, which just goes in a vice. Oh, that's a bit better. Okay, uh, well, I mean, this looks pretty good, albeit very standard. There we go. Uh, I need to do something a little bit different because it's a compulsion, really. So we have these bevels here and there and everywhere. So basically, I'm gonna bevel the outer edges of this leaving that yeah leaving that or should i say chamfer nice So obviously I need to put some a black background on there. Go on. There you go. But I like the 3D effect a lot. And then probably some sort of a yellow wash on the or the on the aluminium that I'll then rub back. So it's just a hint of yellow. I like. Oh, a little bit more filing to do. Hold on.
So now I have little notches where the, where the screws are gonna go. What I should have done actually is make this plate so that the plate went into the holes. As it is, I'm gonna have to put a half washer or something in there. But, uh, but it looks pretty rock and roll, doesn't it? And I have finally now decided what I'm gonna do with this. And here we go, there's that image. I might look at the screen rather than the screen that's a recording screen. I'm gonna make that sort of an effect because that, that's what's in my head. So, well, let's go. I bet you thought that you'd get away with that seeing me draw on something for this episode. Have I got news for you? That's the thing. So I really have totally messed this up. In the, in the image I'm following, the lines in between are much smaller. The problem is I can't have smaller lines because it's a strength thing, or can I? <sighs> yeah, that's doable. Problem is, Hmm. I'm gonna have to start this from scratch, aren't I? Again. Yeah, yeah, this is better. Right, well, here we go. I think it needs a little bit of tidying up, uh, but that actually fits with the image on the uh, right-hand side of your screen at this point. That works better with what we're going for than anything else I've done beforehand. And sometimes this is just how it goes. You've got to try things, you've got to experiment, you've got to try different options and just let it sit, let it percolate, let, the coffee hit your veins. Sorry, I distracted myself with thoughts of coffee. Hi. How's it going? Let me, let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna cut out these. Uh, the, the lines in between are fairly delicate. I'm not entirely certain how strong they're going to be. Uh, there are two options available, three options available to me at this point. Uh, one, if it's strong enough, we leave, we can leave it just as actual sound holes. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be the case. Two, uh, I can put a, a mesh behind it, which would look really cool, uh, allow LED through for one. Um, or three, we can flood it with resin just the top, just the holes themselves, leave the tone chamber um, as a tone chamber. Or, well, what, what would you do? But uh, for now, I'm gonna chop these out. Which means starting with a drill bit.
Apparently I say this is the point of no return quite a lot during these videos, so uh, I'm, I'm not going to say it this time. Although it's killing me inside to, you know, not. Hmm, okay, yeah, there's going to be a little bit more carving involved on that one, I think. Ha! And then he made a mistake. Okay. Well, that one's going to be fun. Let me, uh, let me explain. Well, I don't need to explain. The, uh, the back plate, uh, obviously everything's recessed inside, so actually where the cutaway is, uh, I, I was starting to chop into that, and I don't want to do that. So uh, that one is going to have to be cut in a different way. We're at an angle. Let me try an angle. Okay, try again. That's the end of that. I should have done this the other way around. I completely forgot that the size of the access hole is smaller than the footprint of the sound holes. That could have been problematic. As it stands, I have made a few, a few cuts to where I could access. This is actually relatively strong. Uh, it's going to need some sort of a support, either resin or uh, mesh. I'm edging towards resin at this point. But uh, we'll see. But uh, now I've gone through with the scalpel blade, sorted out my edges, and I am going to essentially inlay by hand uh, the first part, get it down a little bit, and then I'll go through with a, uh, a rotary tool Dremel, I suppose. We're getting there. I think the Dremel is actually a little bit too scary, so I'm going to pre-drill. I'm going to lower it down a little bit with the chisel and the scalpel blade. This is called a cut-to-cut -cut process. Then once I've got the hard line that I want, I'm going to go in with um, probably actually a rotary carving burr uh, and carve it out. It's somewhat scary. These are fairly delicate bits. We should be all right.
I'm very happy. So, this is working out really rather well. I'm uncertain whether I'm going to cut that out or not. Uh, I like that shape. I also like the shape of the bevel going in there. Um, potentially there's room for... Oh, that could be cool. I'm literally thinking of this as I say. Potentially I'll paint that bevel up to that point as a, an accent piece in uh, in that metallic red that we need to go and and check out. It's under some paper over there. Okay, so it is obviously that one's a little bit more flexible. We actually do have some strength here. Uh, I'm going to carve this out, but. Well, I, I still have the question. I, I think it's too delicate to, to leave unsupported. So it's going to have to either have mesh of some sort or resin. I don't like using resin because everybody uses resin. But then again, if it's the right thing for the job, it's the right thing. For, so let's see what we've got. That's a really cool color. So yeah, obviously it was brushed on which is less ideal. Either I'm gonna use that because I know the paint is good and solid and a nice color, and then rub it down and see if I can buff it up, or I'm gonna to have to go and see if somewhere I can find some spray paint. You on? It's on. It's even got the right burr in there, I think. Somebody's run away with my goggles. There we go. Ha! Ah. Were you nervous? Let me know in the comments. Here we go. That went through very many different iterations. And I'm happy with what we've come to. I'm very happy with what we've come to. Uh, it's relatively... relatively flexible, but uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I tend to play uh, on, the, on the edge of disaster, shall we say. Anyway, rasps. I've got a little set of um, antique velorb rasps here. A little beetle in there. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyway, yeah, so these came from uh, VintageToolShop.com, which is uh, my, my hobby business. It feeds me beautifully. Oh, check this out. No, this is a digression. Check this thing. Just restored it the other day. This is like a 150-year-old or older um, wheelwright's chisel. It's just insanely pretty. Back to the program. Uh, rasps. I got them from vintagetoolshop.com. Check it out, we're still shipping.
I'm quite happy. I'm most definitely quite happy. Okay, um, let us see. So this is just a standard, cheapy off Amazon, small self-adhesive strip of LEDs. That could be fun. Um, I suppose just for interest's sake, it's going to end up being something like this. I should have just chucked the whole thing in there, shouldn't I? Okay, now what I'm really thinking is that I'm gonna have to use some resin. This is a little bit too delicate to trust. Um, it's, it's not too bad. I think it's gonna have to be resin. Resin or mesh, but probably resin. And just resin in where the top would be, not, I'm not gonna flood the whole thing. Actually, that's quite tempting. No, 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 no. If we flood the whole thing, then yes, it would give very interesting, um, uh, a, a very interesting glow through all of these ports, but that, just, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't. Um, <clears throat> so, so no, I'm not doing that. Just tape a few of these down. It's a pity it's not, uh, it's not evening. Well, fine, there you go. Quick and dirty. So if I'm going to use the remote, which I want to, then the, the sensor thing is going to have to be visible on the outside of the guitar. help if it worked. Well, oh come on. Did I put the batteries in the right? Uh, first of all, let's see if I put, if that matters. Whoa, see, there we go. <laughs> it's even blue. What does that say? Um, well, I don't know. It 
just having these. Yeah. Just having these around the inside, around the edge of this. Uh, it's going to take a little work. It's going to take a little work. Okay, so at this stage, we're done. I am going to, uh, the decision has really been made. I'm going to uh, fill those holes with some resin. I'm going to have to do a little bit of experimentation with tints. I, I I think the Crimson Guitar Stunning Stain shots work with the resin I've got. Uh, and I just want that tinted... Uh, I want a tinted blue because when the LEDs aren't on, I want it to have some of that effect. We will, we will also... Huh, so this controller isn't even working. Well, there we go. That says a lot, doesn't it? Oh, there it is. You see. So what do I do? Do I do it blue or do I do it orange or do I leave it transparent? And then we decide After the fact, let me know what you think in the comments below. Fine, fine. Okay, what we are going to do is, it is going to be clear, it is going to be transparent. We are, however, to make it interesting, going to uh, put a fine mesh behind the uh, behind the holes. So it's going to have a, a metal mesh of some sort and then clear resin and then whatever colour the LED is turned on to will be what it is. Done. No changes. I never change my mind. I certainly don't listen to comments on YouTube and adjust accordingly. Never once have I ever done that. No, no, that's wrong. I, I, I do that all the time. Speaking of which, yeah, I've got lots and lots and lots of good ideas for the snack from you guys. Thanks for watching. Please click like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you have and haven't clicked the notification button, please do that. But uh, most importantly, Keep safe, stay at home if you can, uh, and yeah, go make some sawdust. We will see you soon. Oh yes, check out Crimson Guitars Extras. There's extra stuff on there. Goodbye. It's raining now, therefore, a little bit darker. Therefore, ha ha! Ha 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 ha! Hi, <laughs> how's it going? Um, uh, red. And of course, we're going to have the same effect in that channel. Oh, I suppose I should mock that up as well, shouldn't I? Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have a guitar here. What do you think? I'm missing a plate. Where's my aluminium? <laughs> it's the little things, the little things that make me happy. Like how the light's going to show through all of those cavities. And we're done. We're done. Thank you. Good night.